an image of the Ramsey's head that Christopher Dunn worked on. That's a fascinating image that it is. He, he overlaid. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, I've often talked about these heads. We talked about symmetry uh, and symmetry being one of the aspects of precision. We see remarkable symmetry, particularly in these statues. So one of the images, this comes from Chris Dunn's book, uh, essentially showing you that the, you have the same curvatures being used in different places, which is an indication of how it was um, how it was manufactured. But but the one, the, the, probably the best example that I can share is this, again, an image from Chris Dunn's book. Unfortunately, this head is now back up on top of the statue, like 30 feet up in the air. So okay. what this is, it's a reverse transparency overlay. So, so they probably saw this, this work. <laughs> I think and, it may have had something to do with it. And, yeah, Although, yeah, to be yeah. fair, they've been restoring a lot of these statues. They, okay. I'm 50-50 on it, to be honest. They, they con they're basically concrete sculpting a lot of the body, and then they're putting back to the pieces that they have because they don't have all the pieces. Okay. There's no mistaking the ancient bits for the, for the modern bits, but... I mean, well, the modern bits for the ancient bits, rather, the perfection of the ancients. But, I mean, it's nice that they're putting it back together, but in a lot of cases, they're making them inaccessible for, for like, detailed study. So you see two Chris Dunn's on the left and the right, right? There isn't two Chris Dunn's, there's only one. Uh, so what you do is you take a photo directly on centerline, uh, you copy the photo, and then you flip it on that vertical axis, right? So you've basically, you're, you're mirror imaging it to the other side. You make both photos 50% transparent. And you overlay them. So what you would get is you would see where the where the features don't match from left to right. You would see blurriness. You see overlaps, and we just don't see it. Like that's what's remarkable about this is it's perfectly symmetrical. I mean, at least within the boundaries of this test, um, yeah. which is an, just an astonishing feature to see in in, in, a, in a granite artifact this large. You don't see that on humans in, we, in general. Humans that's are, right. are not are not perfectly when symmetrical. None of us, in fact, you know, our left nostrils different to the right, right one, and right. eyeballs, and yeah, it's not a human feature, and it's you know, this isn't something you see reflected in classical artwork either. I mean, I've seen David by Michelangelo, sure. damn thing, nearly brought me to tears. It's a beautiful sculpture, but it it's not symmetrical, and it, it's magical artwork. But this, to me, is like. Not only is David not symmetrical, and yet it's absolutely beautiful, but it's also made out of mar marble, marble you know, <laughs> yeah. which is a three on the Mo scale. Yeah, much and softer. This is granite, you're saying? This is granite. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, rose granite. Yeah, much easier to work marble. Um, oh, yeah. You wouldn't, I mean, granite sculptors know this. Like, they, they, yeah. they don't really often choose to work in mediums <laughs> like granite. It's tough. I mean, it lasts a long time, obviously. Uh, but yeah, this is a real tough medium. But whoever was making these things seemed to like working in it, or they found it easy. And to me, it it's kind of represents the most efficient way to make a face. So if you are designing this, again, not just carving it, but designing it, then you could design half the face and just mirror image it, and boom, there's your other half of the face. These things are mysterious to me. I mean, I genuinely think there's, they're a little bit alien in their appearance, in their perfection, in their symmetry. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. that Ozymandias poem it kind of summarizes and, and, and captures that to me. But it's, it's remarkable. It's not just this face that we see this. We see this sort of symmetry and precision in head jets. We see it in, in you know, it's the same face on, on all of these big statues. Chris Dunn's looked at that in the past. I think there's, you know, an endless number of applications for techniques like scanning to really get to the bottom of this uh, and, and study these things in more detail. Um, I got to get Chris Dunn on the show too because, you've, definitely. You, yeah, you've mentioned him several times. Oh, yeah. He's done some incredible work, Love obviously. Chris, yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy, I'm very, very grateful to be able to say I'm friends with him now. Like I, I, I talk to Chris fairly often. A tremendous inspiration for me. He's a big part. I mean, I I think his books will be treated as the, I think as 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 I think they they move the ballpark. They move the whole thing forward since Petrie. Like he's he, he's a modern uh, successor to Petrie, and I do think his works will be appreciated in time for what they are. They, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of get scoffed at by the mainstream and ignored in general by the mainstream uh, today. But I do think that in the future that they'll be looked at and said, yeah, he was he was the guy that really moved this whole discussion forward and made significant discoveries with his work. And he dedicated his life to a lot of it. And he, I mean, he, he went out on a limb with, with a lot of his work, but it's fascinating stuff. And I mean, there's nobody more qualified to talk about these types of things, like a, you know, literally a manufacturing engineer that's been in the game for 50 years. He's uh, looking at it all from an engineering standpoint. Yeah. Well, that's what I appreciate about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a manufacturing engineer in the aerospace industry and he's, he, he is, he, if you want detailed, a detailed study of things like the saw cuts, the tube drills, the statues. I mean, go buy Chris's books. Mm. Uh, I, I use a lot of his information in my videos and credit him for it. And I've also interviewed him on, on my channel. Yeah, it's wonderful work. Um, 
yeah, he, he's been a huge inspiration for this. I think I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now without him. Um, the head jets or head dresses? Head jets are, are there too. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, yeah so um, head jets are the crowns. They're also, there's two types. Of, in fact, this shows you both the head jet right here and the patient in the rear. Uh, these are actually complex curved geometries. They, they have these compound curved surfaces. Again, these are all images from Chris Dunn's book. Um, you know, there's, they're, they're, they're perfectly symmetrical. Uh, when you're front on from left to right, here's another um, reverse transparency on center. But obviously, these things that kind of like they sh they go backwards as well. So they're not per they're not they're symmetrical from one axis or one perspective, but they're compound curved surfaces. So they, you know, the, the curvatures change as they move uh, up there, and then they reverse on themselves in some cases. And these would have been made out of one solid block. Oh, of totally. Yeah. The whole statue would have been made out of them. I mean, today, they're all cut up into different pieces, but. Sure. I mean, these are marvels of engineering. He's a yeah. very complex pattern. If you and and at, and at Luxor, you can still run your hand over a few of them, and they're just immaculate. Like yeah. they're, they're perfectly polished and smooth. You can't sense any deviations or waviness in the stone. I mean, you see the same thing in the curved surfaces of the cornice blocks that you find at Giza. These perfectly polished and consistent curvatures. Like it's machine made. It's not. It's. I don't have any other explanation for it. These are machine made, they're designed, and then mach machine made. Something that's guiding the the cutting tool that's extremely precise and consistent, and 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 adhering to a particular pattern. Um, I don't have any other, you know, explanation for it. Uh, it there's it, you can't you can't do it any other way, as far as I'm concerned. Like, yeah, these these head jets are. And have we found examples? Remarkable. Have we recovered head jets? Have we found examples of those from the Egyptian time period that that they actually did wear these things during that time I period? I don't know. I don't okay. think so. I mean, certainly they're depicted. I know we found some crowns and jewelry. I'm not. I'm honestly not that up to date on the like the jewelry side of things. Okay. Uh, I you know I often skip like the Tutankhamun or Tanis exhibits at mm -hmm. the, in the museum where they have all the jewelry. They're cool. I've been in there before, but I actually don't know if we found replicas of these that yeah not 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 okay. attached to the giant statues they're yeah. yeah they're uh they're they're just utterly amazing i don't i don't know what else to say about them i mean they're it's it's easy to talk about precision and it's a, probably the best way to start it is to talk about you know flat surfaces straight lines 90 degree corners mm -hmm. but in a lot of ways these compound curve surfaces are, are another degree of precision that's 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 even more sophisticated because to get that accurate and to keep it consistent and where it's not a, you know, it's symmetrical sort of when you're front on, but it's actually leaning back, you know, when you're on the side, I mean, keeping all that consistent and, and, and implementing precision in a three-dimensional object like a statue head or a, or a head jet is, is utterly remarkable and probably far more difficult than making a flat surface or a, or, you know, a 90 degree corner.